had an elderly male who was sick and dying in the hospital and his last wish was to go home and to marry his um, girlfriend that he'd been with for 25 years before he died. Our home care coordinator, Erica, who's a nurse and um, actually a lot of people in the team, our pastoral care department, our volunteer manager, we all kind of get together to bring him home and to, um, and to set up a wedding. We had a lot of challenges because he was actively dying, so he didn't have long to live. He had a lot of pain management issues and really belonged in an inpatient setting somewhere so we could manage the symptoms, but he really wanted to go home. So um, Erica worked very closely in the hospital with the pain management docs and getting his pain controlled, getting his symptoms controlled so that we could get him stable enough to discharge in 24 hours. And then our volunteer coordinator made calls to like local bakeries, to the florist, um, and to ask for donations so that we had things set for the house. We needed special approval from the township because there's a three-day waiting period to get married. And so we knew he didn't have three days. And so Erica worked really hard in getting the symptoms controlled with the hospital. We were able to get him home the next day. And um, Noreen spent that afternoon with him and got him signed onto hospice and got him comfortable and worked with his daughters and his girlfriend. And um, then about one o'clock in the afternoon, after everything was set up, the, um, the rabbi was there and the judge was there and they came out to, to marry him. And um, they, they loved Noreen so much, who was the case manager, they wanted her to stay just 24 hours with him. And so you know she stayed and, and he got married and then he died the next night at home. And then his, um, his daughter reached out to us a few days later and she said, I'd really like you to share my dad's story because you know, people think hospice is just about dying and that the nurses just take care of dying people, but it's really about what you can do at end of life. And it's about the last thing, the last you know, hope you have and fulfilling sometimes last wishes. My story is about my 19-year-old client whose baby was three months at the time. She was feeling very depressed. She was expressing thoughts to harm herself and her baby. She needed a psychiatric emergency evaluation. She knew she needed one, right? so I provided her with the support and translation throughout the process. It was good to see that by the time the screening process was over, she was breathing a sigh of relief. In fact, she was able to walk out with her prescription that night because I walked it over to the in-hospital pharmacy. She started her medication the very next day. She started outpatient intensive services where she received medication management and individual counseling. I'm happy to report that she's stable at this time. She's able to better care for herself, for her baby. In fact, she's actually back in school for her second semester. I'm very proud of her because the outcomes to this story could have been very different, but she had the courage to report how she was feeling and not just report it, but actually do something about it. And for that, I am thankful. Larissa received a phone call from a patient's son, and he sounded very upset. He asked if she could please come over. Larissa rearranged her schedule and just felt she should go at that time. So she went to the house, but the patient was on the floor, unresponsive, and was having a seizure. So Larissa tended to the patient, called 911, and the patient was transferred. The patient is doing well and the son called me the next day and insisted on speaking with me and he said that she was amazing. She had saved his mother's life and that the doctor validated that as well when the patient got to the hospital. So had it not been for her quick, calm response that he felt his mother would not be there today. We received a letter of praise for Cheryl because she did such good work with this patient who had multiple wounds that were pretty complex and she took a great care of this patient because she had to keep changing the treatments in consultation with the doctor. She made the patient feel really, really comfortable with the expert care that she was given. Another part of the letter that really stood out was that she had such compassion and that this was more than a job for Cheryl, it was more of a calling. The story was that one of our nurses, Augustina, was taking care of a woman who was at the end stage of her life. She had this dog that she loved. 
due to this woman's illness, she wasn't able to care for the dog. So uh, our nurse, Augustina, went above and beyond, and she actually brought a groomer in to take care of the dog. The patient was thrilled that her dog was so well cared for. The dog was there towards the end of this woman's life to comfort her, and also was with her when she passed away.